Hi there, Sam Conlog here from Infusion Studios. So I thought it might be fun to do a little Maxwell workflow. Um, figured I'd do a little from Studio Max straight through post work and After Effects and using uh, multi-light and comping, compositing those layers together and everything and extracting that. Do it as quick as I can. So let's just throw up Max here and while we're waiting for that, we need a model. Um, and as a side note, there's some pretty cool models from, I believe this is an Italian uh, furniture manufacturer, Flow, or I guess that says Flow, not sure. Um, anyway, so all these uh, various beds have pretty decent 3D models that go with them. So let's grab, grab this one. Pretty cool. So um, the reason I'm grabbing these is I don't want to get too much into materials and go crazy with that. Um, so in this case, we're just going to do, um, you know, some straight linen type stuff. Uh, so the model itself will pretty much take care of it. Okay, so we're going to save that model here. Extract that. Okay, so that comes in as a 3DS file. So now we're going to go over to Studio Max. And we're going to import it. About oh, six meg. We'll merge it with the current scene. Um, uh, okay, so this is coming in pretty big. Sees it as 181 feet um, long. So we're in meters. Let's see if we were to switch to. Yeah, none of these are particularly good. So what we'll do is we'll just use world scale. Okay. Close that. We go over. I'm going to grab the rescale world units, and this is just a quick way to rescale a scene if it isn't behaving the way that you want. Uh, size wise, you can just go and rescale the whole thing. Oh, before we do that, we've got to convert this edible poly. All right, we'll try 8% and measure it, see what we get. So, 5.5 feet tall, it's probably a little bit big. So, we'll do that again. Just go. 90% of this. So that's 0.9, let's say 0.92 for the whole scene. We'll measure again. Uh, close enough, that's fine. Okay, so now that we've got that, here's our model, which is the, you know, it's pretty decent considering this came straight from the manufacturer. A lot better than what you usually get. Um, so let's go ahead and make a backdrop. So do that really typical way of doing it. Um, just make a line. We can even just kind of walk to the grid points if we want. We're just going to make a corner like so. Get rid of the grid. There you go. And we'll make that a curve so that we can then lathe it. Give us a curved background. I'm going to go in and change the interpolation to be adaptive. And I'm going to lathe that. And I'm going to set the, the max. And if we go in perspective, we basically get a bowl. Let's say weld decor. Um, the turn on back face call to allow us to see only the facing side. Don't need the caps. Um, I'm flipping so that I can see the inside. And we will, we don't need a full 360. All we need is say 90 degrees, a little pie. And we will just move that into position however we want to do it, or we can move the bed, but in this case, let's do it like this. So that's basically the geometry for our our little setup here, not unlike a studio light setup. Uh, now that we've done that, we're going to go in and we're just going to turn on Maxwell as our render. So Maxwell render. And we're also going to use Maxwell Fire, which is the um, interactive viewport, render viewport. Uh, to do that, we've got to set active shade to Maxwell render as well. And for resolution, 
Uh, I'm just going to go with a 35 millimeter slide. And we can make that 800 pixels wide just for our test. Um, that's pretty much everything to do there. We're not going to mess with the render setup. Yep. Okay. Um, so next is to just set up a gray material for our environment. Um, since we're in Maxwell now, we're using Maxwell as the engine, the standard materials don't show up with a preview. Okay, so we got to go in. We're just going to go and we're going to say we want Maxwell material. Discard the old one. So in Maxwell materials, there's a couple ways you can know. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to get into this too much. There's the actual Maxwell material editor, uh, which allows you to do a number of things. Um, differently so you can change what your preview scene is um, so it could be drapery or you know whatever uh, you can even load in your own file I'm gonna stick with the default preview uh, I may not even really use this um, just wanted to show it to you uh, when I'm making materials I do but um, for the sake of this and we'll just discard it Delete our preview okay so that's just basically uh, a light gray and we're gonna apply it there. Um, actually, for now, we're just going to apply it to everything because we're going to do our light setup next. Okay, now when doing lights in Maxwell, basically the, the way this works, if you don't know, um, physically based. So, in order for something to emit light, it has to emit it from a surface or from an object. So, you could emit it from a light bulb with a reflector and everything. Um, that tends to increase render time. So, you, in that case, you'd use an IES light which Maxwell supports. Um, the other option, which is what I'm going to use here, is to use uh, planes or cards or whatever you want to call them, but flat surfaces, low poly or single poly flat surfaces to be our light emitters. Um, I'll take a little step further, and what I'm going to do is use over at hdrlabs.com. There's the Lightsmith Connect collection, which is a pretty cool collection of HDR uh, images of various light elements. So you have softbox, you have uh, flash umbrella, um, LEDs, uh, even a window, uh, television, um, ring lights, uh, various shapes, uh, circular lights, octagonal lights, that kind of thing. Pretty cool. So basically, light elements from a real photographic light setup um, so that these will cast in Maxwell uh, proper luminance for this HDR image. So I've already grabbed those. Um, and what I'm going to do now, we're going to create a light. Um, so first I'm going to make the material. In order to do a light in Maxwell, again, it needs to be a light emitting surface. So the material attached to it needs to be a light emitting material. Um, so we're going to create uh, a emitter layer. We don't need the BSDF, which is basically just a regular shader. Um, we, so now we have our light emitter, uh, which already is set to emit light. Um, you can set watts, intensity, and all of that. But since we're going to use those images, we can just go and grab our lightsmith, in this case, EXRs. So here's the window, EXR. We're gonna grab that. Here's what that looks like. Um, if we're, you know, obviously there's more data here than we, what we can see. So just a, you know, just a simple window. So we're gonna put that uh, over here on the right. And then I also want, uh, if I update the preview, we'll get that here. I can set an intensity. Again, I'm not gonna get into these materials too much, but it's pretty straightforward if you're, if you're using an HDR to emit light. You just set an intensity. Um, I know from dealing with these images before, one tends to not really be enough. Now that depends on your exposure. So the whole thing with Maxwell is trying to fill your scene with, with light without overexposing, and you have to be careful about noise and, and all that. There's certain things you might do that if you underpower a light um, and crank up your, uh, your film speed, you're basically, like you would in the real world, forcing noise into your setup. So we won't avoid that, so I'm just going to kind of boost this. I'm going to boost up to 5. Uh, if I hit preview again, you're going to see that it's brighter. It's not blown out necessarily, but so we already know, okay, roughly what that's going to look like. I'm going to make a copy. 
and I'm just going to go and grab a different light element. So these are all these are the different elements. So we have the softbox, we have uh, the synthetic LED area lights, fluorescent tube. In this case, I'm going to grab the umbrella. Uh, we want to say all files so we can see those EXRs. I'm going to grab the EXR. And again, here's what that looks like. Okay, so that's all we need there. Um, we'll just go name these. So this would be our window. And this is going to be our umbrella. Okay, so those two are ready. So now to do our lights, geometry, we're just going to make planes. Okay, so I'm going to make a plane there, and our umbrella, make sure our window's going to be bigger, so our umbrella's going to be small, you know, it could be a little bigger, um, like that. And let's turn on edges so we can see, in Maxwell you don't want any more polys than you need, so I'm just going to reduce these planes down to nothing, just one poly. I'm also going to just convert them to editable poly. You don't really have to, but just as a best practice kind of thing. Turn off edges. Um, and now I'm basically just going to assign our materials to our lights. Okay, so this is our umbrella here. Put that there. Put that there. I'm not going to worry about, I mean, I could go in and I could tell this to be visible in the viewport. I um, guess we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so we will just turn this here, go local. Okay. Go wireframe so we can see where everything is. Okay, so this is our umbrella. We're just going to kind of stick it over here. So this would be something a photographer would set up, um, a flash umbrella, pop off. And then our window, we may do more than one of these. We probably have an array of windows. So actually, I'm going to turn this back like that. We just kind of want it to imply some natural light. In reality, a photographer might set that up, the light box. Here, we're just going to use a window so we get those other hues. Out of the EXR, we'll just do two windows, make them instance. Okay, so for now, here's our light setup. And if I were to hit render, um, we would immediately start getting uh, light emission. So now we're ready to create a camera. And we're just going to use standard. Max cameras. Um, I'm going to pretend I'm using something like a Canon 50 mil. Um, can go down to 1.4. It's a decent lens, fixed lens. So we're going to go ahead and just set that to 50. We are going to go down here to the Maxwell section, and you can set your f-stop. You can set set your shutter speed, ISO. Um, you could also switch over to you know, rotary shutter, that's for motion blur. Um, what kind of diaphragm it has. Let's do a polygonal five, just for the heck of it. Um, being an inside shot using artificial light, well, granted, we have a window, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and say 3.5 for our f-stop. So pretty wide aperture, pretty big aperture. Um, and I'm going to set our shutter speed to 30. And for now, I'm going to leave, actually, I'll set our ISO to 200. And let's just see where that gets us. So if we now view through the camera view, and I'm not really going to worry about composition or anything like that yet. I'm just going to pick a spot, turn on a frame. 